Hi there. I'm a burgeoning watch collector. And uh, looky here what I just got today. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it's a parcel from Switzerland. And we all know in the watch world, good things come from Switzerland. This is the new Techne Gosshawk. And uh, I'm really excited to share with this, uh, share this with you. So uh, thank you for joining me in this unboxing. As you can see, it's boxed pretty well. Um, it was um, sent economy, and uh, it took not quite two weeks to get, maybe maybe a little bit less. I was uh, actually pretty pleased. As I said, it could take one to five weeks um, to uh, to come. So, um, anyway, let's get started. Open this bad boy up, because I've been waiting all day. Like a kid in a candy store. Right. So, we have the obligatory shipping invoice. how it's packaged looks like in the daily newspaper from Geneva or something I don't know let's pull this out and uh, Techne is a uh, new boutique or at least as far as I know new boutique watch company um, I had been looking around, I was very interested in, um, in Fliegers, uh, which are historic German Luftwaffe watches. Um, there is some pros and cons, obviously there's pros and cons with every watch. Um, I like the look of the Flieger. I didn't like the fact that the historical ones don't have dates. I've been looking at Leiko. Um, which up until recently had used the same or one of the same mechanisms as this watch, which is the Miyata by Citizen. Uh, and but now uh, they've been a little less clear about their sourcing for their uh, for their engines. So, but I was I was keen, you know, was, in terms of my price point, it was right where I wanted it to be. I liked the um, historical nature, but Leiko being one of the original. Uh, Flieger manufacturers for the German Luftwaffe. Uh, I just like the look of the watch. Um, on the other hand, I was very interested in the Hamilton. Um, it gets, I was looking at the Khaki. It gets uh, great reviews. Uh, Sapphire Crystal, which the um, Leiko I don't believe had, or at least later versions maybe did have, but earlier versions didn't. Um, Hamilton um, had a date. Um, it had the Etta uh, uh, mechanism, which I was very keen on, and was really torn between these two. Certainly, it wasn't a Flieger, uh, but it's a quality watch. It gets great ratings. It gets one of the best ratings for a sub thousand uh, dollar watch. But I just didn't really like the look all that much. I wasn't that keen on it. Um, it was a sharp looking watch. I really think it was the kind of thing that would look better in person for sure. I haven't had a chance to see that. I didn't see the Lego. I haven't seen this. Um, but I was basically getting ready to pull the trigger. And then I stumbled upon uh, this company here and uh, was really pretty excited because um, it takes the aviator look of the watch to a contemporary level, very uh, Bell and Ross like. Um, and uh, it has the display case back and even though it's a Miata I think it's the 8217 um, they really did some nice ornate finishing on the back of the watch um, so anyway without any further ado I just kinda wanted to explain my my mindset of what I was looking at looking for uh, in a watch and then when I saw this I really I really kinda felt uh, fell in love with it so um, this is uh, my first time actually seeing it in person. The only drawback that I, I could see was it's a 40 millimeter uh, case, or is it 41? I can't recall. Um, 
it seemed a little small for me. I kind of generally prefer a larger watch, but I think all things considered with all the other uh, features that the watch offered, um, and I just like the idea of it being a small company. You know, Hamilton's huge, Laco's huge, you know, this is this is kind of a new, small, upstart company. I really like that idea. You know, it's not not too many people going to be walking around with a, with a Techni uh, watch. So, inside we have uh, the Certificate of Authenticity and uh, instructions, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, and this is for a couple different kind of watches covered by the instructions. So, we'll take a look at that later. Let's pull this out of here. Discard of that. It uh, comes in a nice wooden box. Uh, it's in, engraved Techne. Uh, kind of not what I was expecting because what I had seen online, the watches uh, came in like a foam carrying case. So that's kind of what I was expecting. But I, I, I like this. I like this more because I don't really have a need for a foam travel case. Um, so let's see, let's open that bad boy up. Oh, yes indeed. And there we go, let's get the light on that a little bit better. And you can see it really does a lot of the same things that uh, the old style Fliegers do. It's a real clean face. Um, heavy on the uh, Super Luminova, on the hands and the hours and the indices. Um, so it's got all that going for it. It's got a uh, brushed stainless steel case. Uh, the size looks to be good. Um, and, and, you know, it has a date, which uh, I really like. Um, and I like the fact where it's positioned, that it's, it's down here between uh, the... Uh, uh, the four and the five, which is kind of off to the side and out of the way. Um, this uh, sub-dial here is a 24-hour dial, and uh, not only is that functional, because I do, I do a lot of things where I want to know 24-hour military time, um, but it, it uh, also lends that sort of uh, aviator, you know, flight instrumentation look uh, to the watch. Um, so you can see that it I got the dark leather band. Mm, it was a toss up between this and the brown, like a lighter brown. Uh, again, more akin to the um, uh, the standard Fliegers. Uh, but I went with this thinking that this would be a little bit more um, universal. Uh, we could wear it for dress or for um, casual. And uh, hopefully that works out. So we'll see on the back. If you can see that there, it's got your standard standard clasp. I did order it in a couple of different lengths. And I, let me just quickly talk about the price. Um, it was uh, $320. It was sub $350 with shipping and handling. Um, and I think for what you get at the price point, uh, it's hard to beat. I did a lot of research. All the articles really gave it rave reviews uh, in terms of uh, craftsmanship, quality, build, and so on. And let's take a look at the back. Now the rotor is a little bit different. Now some of the rotors I had seen, uh, this you know this is an automatic, uh, it, um, so it's self winding and it has the uh, cutout rotor which I really like. Um, some of the photos I had seen it actually had a gold rotor, which I was really pretty excited about, and I was hoping that I would get, but uh, this isn't that. However, it does have uh, Cote de Genève on there, um, and so you can see that it's, uh, you know, uh, as opposed to, say, uh, the Leco, um, and even the... Um, uh, to the uh, uh, Hamilton, if I recall correctly, I really think it's a lot more ornate case back. I like the rounded look of that. Um, now, it's supposed to be, interestingly, a unidirectional um, 
winding, which I kind of thought was interesting. I haven't really run into that. I hadn't known too much about that, and I had done some research, and supposedly there are some reasons why, from a sort of physics energy standpoint, that would make a lot of sense. Um, and maybe it only does wind in one direction, but it certainly moves in, in, in two directions. So um, that's not quite as as advertised, I don't think. I'll have to go back and take a look at the uh, um, at the specs. But either way, I don't really care, you know, too much about that. I just kind of thought it was cool that they had done something a little bit different, uh, put in a little bit more thought, perhaps, into the mechanism. So there's the back. I always like a display back. And both of the watches that I was sort of torn between, uh, the Flieger and uh, the Hamilton, both had display backs. But I have to say, I was really, I really just fell in love with this dial. I just thought it was really cool, really modern take on that. Really um, did what I wanted it to do from the from the Leiko uh, Flieger standpoint. Um, just wish it had the uh, ETA uh, mechanism, but I'll, I'll get my ETA one day. Um, but uh, again, this is a, um, a Miata uh, 8217, I believe is the uh, number, model number of the mechanism. It's made by Citizen. Uh, again, uh, a workhorse, um, gets good ratings, solid, maybe not quite as elaborate as the uh, the Edda's, um, but uh, still a very, um, a very strong engine indeed. So, let me go ahead and put that on. Right now I'm wearing my Marathon uh, General Purpose Mechanical Watch. So I'm gonna take that off. Those of you who have looked at my videos before have seen the unboxing of that one. And uh, this has some kind of wax sealy deal thing here, which I might just cut off with the knife. Alright, so let's put that on. Now with the automatics, And there is a plastic cover on the... Oh, and, and another plus that I really liked about this watch was, unlike Leiko, again, I think I talked about this, um, this has a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, which is interesting for this price point because even the Hamilton, which was more, uh, did not have... The, the, Ham the Hamilton khaki did not have anti-reflective coating. So that's an extra extra bonus here of stepping up to the sapphire crystal with the anti-reflective coating. So that was kind of a clincher for me too. And it's got the plastic uh, still on the back for protection purposes. So let's take a look at that dial close up. Okay. There's a side view. I want to say it's a 20 millimeter lug. Not really sure. Um, in person, the dial is a, is a kind of a dark gray. I thought it was black, but it's not. It's actually a really interesting color, uh, and I like it. Um, and we'll, we'll see what the loom does in a minute, too. I'll be able to show that to you, I think. And interestingly, even this 24-hour sub-dial hand, the orange one, shows up. Um, that that's, uh, has uh, super lumina, uh, super luminova uh, uh, painted on there. So... Uh, it's bold, I think it makes a statement, um, but at the same time, I think it's pretty classy. I don't know what you think. Uh, but I'm going to put it on. Now I have a um, seven and a quarter inch wrist, and it fits about halfway. And I'll tell you, that's really comfortable. Um, it's not too big, which is nice. Uh, it's very lightweight. It's one of the things that uh, the articles... Uh, uh, I had read, had commented about about it was that it um, was bold and made a statement without being bulky and um, easy to kind of forget that, that you're wearing it. So um, you can see that the uh, it's got a nice sweep of the second hand that indicates that it's an automatic. 
and of course I haven't adjusted it for time or anything like that or the date or, or whatever so let's take a look at that and let's see if we can get a, a loom shot here Let me get that good and charged with this light. <clears throat> Sorry about the technical difficulties. All right, get that charged up. All right, that should be enough to get an indication what it's going to look like. Ah, there we go. That's much better. So there's an indication of the loom. That's pretty good. I do like that. The hands show up really nice. So, there we are. Um, this is the Techne Gosshawk, fresh from Switzerland. Um, a relatively new watch. I think it offers quite a bit, uh, and you're certainly not going to see everybody else wearing one. That's for sure. So, thanks for checking in, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.